Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 1st, 2022, around 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming off the South Carolina coast, tropical storm Bonnie, more tropical waves, and more severe weather and heat waves upcoming. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, well, it is certainly quite busy. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, this is the remnants here of Invest Area 95L now moved over Texas, continuing to produce some very heavy rainfall and gusty winds. We have a new Invest. This is Invest Area 96L off the South Carolina coast. Not really expected to do much, but is a little bit interesting. We'll talk about that here in a minute. We have newly designated Tropical Storm Bonnie, a tropical wave near the Lesser Antilles, and two more tropical waves that have emerged off the coast of Africa. So looking at everything again, there is no more signs here of 95L. The main circulation has moved inland. So we are with Tropical Storm Bonnie down here, now approaching the Central American coastline and Costa Rica. We have Invest Area 96L off the South Carolina coast, but this will be moving away from land, kind of paralleling the Carolina coastline. And then this tropical wave over here that doesn't really have much of a chance to develop because pretty strong upper level winds partially created by Bonnie here uh, will be preventing significant development. So off the South Carolina coast here, we actually have a storm today or a system rather that was advertised by a couple of models to drift northward and then kind of try to sneakily develop as it approached the southeast coast here. Now, today, there actually is some spin with it, and recent radar observations have shown that this has tried to close off south here of Charleston, South Carolina, but it is moving away from land. Either way, there will be some heavy rainfall and squally conditions, especially on the northwest side of this circulation, some of the heavy rainfall and bands that will be coming through. So certainly uh, not a good day and certainly some very overcast conditions, especially in coastal North Carolina and extreme coastal Northeast South Carolina at this point. Um, so we'll be watching for additional development with that, but no uh, development at this time is expected uh, or significant development that is. Tropical Storm Bonnie has now become a fully designatable tropical cyclone. So it has a closed circulation and everything now. We do have tropical storm warnings in effect for Nicaragua and coastal uh, portions of Costa Rica as well. And then we have a tropical storm warning on the other side as this is expected to remain a tropical storm throughout its entire duration in Central America and then emerge back over water into the East Pacific Basin. Now, this is not expected to threaten land. This is expected to move away. But right now, for portions of Central America, this will be a pretty heavy hitter here. So if we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery, we notice today that the circulation as a whole is well better organized. And we actually have what appears to be a central dense overcast beginning to form kind of a not send it really core with this system. And so basically what's happening right now is this is trying to undergo some intensification and reorganization as it approaches the coast here. Now, as it stands right now, this probably has another about about 10-ish hours or so, probably another five or 10 hours before it actually interacts here with the coast, where after that time, additional strengthening will be unlikely. Now, notice that there is a big lake here, and this is one of the largest lakes, I believe, in Central America. And as it crosses over, it could actually strengthen or at least maintain some of its intensity. So for that reason, there is tropical storm conditions expected throughout the entire duration of where the storm's core is expected to move. If we look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier this morning, we'll have another one going in later today. But the one that was in there earlier this morning did find a closed circulation, some pretty weak westerly winds here and northwesterlies here. But generally speaking, pressures were around 1,006 to 1,005 millibars. And we did have some tropical storm force winds, especially on that northern side. Stronger winds did exist with convective bands up to the north. Now, given the recent satellite uh, depiction here, we actually probably have winds that have strengthened and pressures that have fallen. Uh, and so it certainly would not surprise me if this is stronger than about 40 miles per hour. Looking at the overall track forecast, again, this is expected to move into Central America within the next about 12 hours, and then it will be moving off 
generally into the East Pacific, where after that time it will kind of resume a northwesterly motion, but staying well away from land at this point, I don't see any significant land concerns once this crosses into the East Pacific. So overall here, tropical cyclone hazards. Now, the hurricane watch that was in effect for portions of uh, Nicaragua have been dropped, and those have been replaced instead with tropical storm warnings. We have inland tropical storm warnings all the way throughout this entire region for most of Nicaragua and portions of Costa Rica as well. And then we have a tropical storm watch to the north and also to the south of that. Tropical storm conditions are expected to begin sometime later this evening, probably within the next about two to three hours is when we would expect tropical storm conditions to kind of first arrive. The rain bands are already coming through now, but generally speaking, there is an estimated 60 to 70 mile per hour wind that is expected uh, as the storm's core begins to make landfall. Again, this is accounting for some additional strengthening that will be possible over the next about five to 10 hours before this makes landfall. And we notice that that wind field, again, is very small because the storm size, if we go back here, the storm size, this core is relatively small. And so for that reason, the overall radius of maximum winds are small. But generally speaking, we expect about 60 to 70 mile per hour sustained wind right near the coast and about 40 to 50 even well inland. In terms of the wind gust potential, we are expecting at least 70 mile per hour winds right near the coast, and that is to be expected with a storm making landfall at the strength that is predicted, probably somewhere around 50 to 60 miles per hour with gusts up to 70. And then tropical storm conditions and 60 mile per hour winds are expected to continue all the way inland and even onto the East Pacific side, we could see a 60 mile per hour gust and some of those heavier squalls that end up kind of rolling through. In terms of the wind gust potential, there is, in terms of the quantitative precipitation rather, so in terms of the rainfall forecast, uh, we do expect a pretty hefty amount of rain. First of all, to the north, not a lot of rainfall as kind of one would expect, and not a lot expected further south either. Uh, but generally, kind of the sweet spot is where the storm's core will be making landfall and kind of going over. Uh, so in the region that the storm's core is expected to go, there is a swath of between five to eight inches of rain that is possible and there is a kind of a maximum here of seven inches right near the coast as the strong uh, core of the system will still be intact as it nears the coast and just a little bit inland as well before it starts to interact with some of the mountainous train and whatever this big lake here again we'll be watching to see how the structure evolves but generally speaking all the way into the east pacific side near the storm's core around five to eight inches of rain is possible. Again, higher amounts will be near the coast here on the Caribbean side of everything. So looking out further here, what's going on? Well, first of all, today, we have a risk for severe storms across portions of the Midwest, really. We have a slight risk for severe storms today, generally speaking, for hail and damaging winds. And this will be in places like Sturgis, South Dakota, and Rapid City, South Dakota with a marginal risk surrounding that all the way up into the Ohio Valley and even a marginal risk out here in northern Maine. And this goes again th for the threat of damaging winds and large hail. Tomorrow we also have multiple slight risks area, one up here across the northeast and one out here across the upper midwest. And the Corn Belt regions, again no tornado threat but significant wind and hail are possible. And the day three threat, a marginal risk for severe storms across portions of the southeast and mid-Atlantic, with also a marginal risk across portions of the Corn Belt states as well. In terms of the heat outlook, there is a heat advisory and red flag warnings as well across portions of the desert southwest and, and really across portions of Nevada, etc. And going into portions of California later this week, we will have some heat out in that vicinity, generally speaking, and then also some flooding concerns across portions of the Carolinas and across Texas with Invest Area 95L and, of course, down here in New Mexico in the desert southwest where the monsoon season is fully expected. We have multiple thunderstorm chances for the next 24 hours across portions of the United States, so make sure to buckle up. All right, with that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.